Ready, Cole? Oh, he is. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Worship with Hope, United Methodist Church. Friends, it is a delight to welcome you here. If we haven't met yet, I'm Pastor Danny, and it's a joy. If this is your first time worshiping with us, uh, or the first time in a while, welcome back. We are glad you are here. If you didn't have a chance to see, um, we have new t-shirts. Check out this new shirt, you guys. Doesn't this look nice? Looks real nice, right? Yeah, you should get one. If you ordered one, you should pick it up, please. And if you didn't order one, take a look at the extras we got, and you can take one home today. If you don't find your size, let me know, and we'll order some more. Um, other, other announcements that I would like to share. Today we're going to start a new sermon series, and it's called Unraveled. This is a series, and you can take a look at uh, the beautiful artwork that Diane put together for this series. This series explores biblical stories of unraveled shame and unraveled identity, fear, dreams, and, and expectations. I'm sure none of you have had any of your plans unraveled before right? Right. Well, so did biblical characters. So we're going to read through some stories from scripture. We're going to explore where God meets us in the unraveling and the spiraling of our plans, the unraveling of us, and then God turning it into something new. So join us for the next several weeks. We're going to be uh, working through our unraveled stories couple other announcements. One is that our projector needs your prayers. She needs your prayers, you guys. She is not wanting to wake up any day ever again, probably. And it just so happened that we already have a group that has been meeting to work on sound and video updates in this room, in this sanctuary. So we're probably not going to have an in-between, you know, a uh, um, something, we're not going to purchase something yet until we get something that's long-term. So, bulletins and hymnals it is. Y'all remember that? Yes, you do. Very good. Okay, so we're going to do that for a little bit. We need your patience. We need your grace. Thank you. Thank you for that already. I know there's a couple people with some announcements. Sandy's going to come up. Jolene's coming up. All right, so take me out to the ball game. Sunday, June 25th is the date of our first summer fun gathering. So we'll meet at the church at about 11.15 to carpool to the game, or if you wish to go down on your own, you can just meet us there at Principal Park. We'll be cheering the Iowa Cubs, who will be playing the Memphis Redbirds. The game starts at 1.08. And there's a reason that they do the 08, and I think it's KCCI, but I can't remember. But anyway, general admission on Sundays is free, as long as you bring three non-perishable food items. So, pretty easy. And then you can spend all of your money on the goodies, you know, the hot dogs and drinks and stuff. So there are additional um, information on the, on the flyers, and there's one in Fellowship Hall and one in the hallway. And we ask that you wear your new Hope t-shirt if you have one. Okay? Yeah! Yay! And now that I have the mic, I have one more. Thursday night is our general meeting for United Women in Faith, UMW for me. Um, it's at 6 o'clock. There will be a um, dinner. And then we will have... Sarah Rosenblum from the, hosp from the hospital, sorry, from the library, sorry, Sarah, from the library coming to talk. Um, for those of you who don't know, we have a bookmobile in the process of being um, worked on and, and getting ready to go out and travel from place to place. So that's one of the things she'll be talking about and then talking about book series and that kind of stuff. So any woman, and you know what, gents, We'll even feed you if you want to come. Um, come on Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. I would like to make an update about the picture directory that we had talked about almost two months ago. Um, we have a committee of seven or eight people. We have decided 
to go with what works best for everybody, and they have the universal um, company has a picture directory that will be updatable for four years. You'll have an app that you can have on your phone. It will have all the information there in one handy place, so if you're not at home, you can get all of that. You can get a flash drive, I think, so everything will be work out for the best. The pictures are going to be taken, so you can get this on your calendar, the first full week of September. So it's September 5 through 9. So that way you can be planning. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry, last one. But I just thought, reminder to dance with me on Wednesday if you want to at 6.30 from like little itty bitty four year olds. Sorry, Andrew and Catherine, you might be voluntold. And maybe Ava and uh, the other one might be voluntold to help me. Um, and Eric's voluntold to show off his dance moves. So <laughs> join me at 6.30 to do an upbeat liturgical dance. Okay. Thank you all. Today is a special Sunday. We're going to remember what Christ did just the night before he died, right? We do this normally on the first Sunday of every month, but it's a special Sunday, so we're doing it on the second this week or this month. And we're also celebrating a, a recent high school graduate. Maeve, can you wave your hand? Hi, Maeve. She's going to come up in a few minutes, but will you already let her know that, she, that we're excited that she's here and we're excited for her recent graduation? Thank you. <laughs> All right, we gave you a lot of things to think about and put on your calendar. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds to worship our loving and living God. Please rise in body and spirit and join me in the responsive invocation. Gracious God, we bring you the broken parts of ourselves. Creator God, we bring you the joyful parts of ourselves. Weave us together in hope and grace. God of new life, we bring you doubt and faith knotted in our hearts. Unravel our doubts, draw us together, and point us toward you. In hope and faith we pray, in hope and faith we worship.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Our scripture reading today is from Genesis 18, verses 1 through 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. As he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and he saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after you, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I sh will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, and they were advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after, um, the, after the manner of woman. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband old, shall I be fruitful? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Yes. You did laugh. Here ends the reading. I want to invite Maeve to come forward while I read a little bit of Paul's beginning words in his letter to the Philippians. And Sigourney, would you be able to come forward so that Maeve could have a microphone? Do you have the microphone? Thank you. Right here. Perfect. Here's how Paul begins his letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I mention you in my prayers. I'm thankful for all of you every time I pray. And it's always a prayer full of joy. He says, I'm glad because of the way you have been my partners in the ministries of the gospel from the time you first believed it until now. I'm sure about this. The one who started a good work in you will stay with you to complete the job by the day of Christ Jesus. I have good reason to think this way about all of you because I keep you in my heart. You are my partner in God's grace, both during my time in prison and the defense and support of the gospel. He says, God is my witness that I feel affection for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. Maeve, who just happens to be as tall as I am up on this <laughs> pulpit. Maeve, 
these are words to you as these are our words to you as a church we are lucky to have been a partner in Christ with you as you as all of us have worked together in the ministries of God while attending high school and in your many other activities you finished confirmation here two years ago you supported young disciples as you've helped lead Sunday school here with Linda Janine and Sigourney. You've helped us with Vacation Bible School for several years and more, right? Amen. Can you all say amen? Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Maeve, I've got some questions for you. We want to know where you graduated from. Um, I graduated from Marshalltown High School. Wonderful. Tell us what extracurricular activities you participated in throughout high school. Um, I was in band, um, swimming, track and field, um, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. Let's talk about busy, right? And what are your plans now after graduation? Um, I'm going to the College of St. Mary in Omaha to become a nurse. Wonderful. If you're proud of me, will you let her know? Wait, 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 don't run off yet. Don't run off, wait. We've got two things for you. One is this gift, and still don't run. The other thing we want to give you is a blessing. We want to bless you as you go. So, and this is our prayer. If you look in your bulletin, I'll say what's not in bold if you will join me in what is. Maeve, you are a special part of this congregation. No one else in the whole world is quite like you. As a congregation, we want to support you and encourage in you a growing commitment to Christ. We bless you to grow in body, apparently, and mind and spirit. We bless you to make mistakes and to learn from them, even if the consequences are difficult and painful. We bless you, Maeve, to explore life, to be adventurous in discovering who God has created you to be. May you trust in the Lord with all your heart and seek God's will in all you do. We promise, Maeve, to support you with our love and prayers and walk with you on your journey of faith. Amen. Amen. All right, clap for her as she goes back. Thank you, Maeve. Amen. Sorry, it had been turned off. That was me. Okay, saving the batteries, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay, now we're ready. Today is noisy offering. And someone noticed that I tried to get all the colors. And I was intentional in that because there are all these colors of T-shirts that we got but I couldn't find an orange bucket except one that had a jack-o'-lantern on it, so I skipped orange, but I have all the other colors. So after I get done talking, you'll get to choose a bucket, any color you want, and we'll go among these grown-ups and they're gonna put some noisy money in your bucket, or quiet money, either kind is fine. Let's find out where this money's going to go. It's called, Mobile United Methodist Missionaries. And this is right here in Iowa. They serve our part of the state and south. They do small towns 
where maybe the church isn't quite big enough to do something like Vacation Bible School. So they'll show up with their glue sticks and their markers and their paper, and they'll run Vacation Bible School for people. Another thing they do is after school programs in communities that need assistance with that. Uh, and they recruit volunteers. They send kids to camp, kids who can't afford going to camp. They send them to the Jesus, Others, and You camp. It's called the Joy Camp. And they connect work projects with volunteer teams ready to help. So, Mobile United Methodist Ministries is where our noisy offering is going today. So choose a bucket, any color you want, and let's see how much money there is to collect. Anybody want my blue one? Nope? Okay. I'll just put it up front. Make sure you do both sides of the sanctuary and you have to walk through the rows. Yeah. We got two girls going down the same row. Could you kind of see what's happening? Four. We got three people going down the same row. That's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Here she comes again. <laughs> Maybe that row has lots of money. <laughs> Catherine's going to get this side all by herself. Everybody else is over here. Raise your hand if you'd like a child to come to you. They're having trouble knowing where to go. Okay, at the back, girls, see at the back? People have their hands up. Elena, do you see anybody with their hands up? No? Oh, over here. There's somebody with their hand up. There we are. Okay. some money. There you go. Why don't you put that bag in that blue one? Yeah, plenty of room. Let's stay up here. Come up here with your buckets, please. Wow. <gasps> oh, my. Barrett has the biggest bucket. Do you know where, can you see where to put it? Put it right next to the other ones. Good job. Let's have a prayer before you go back to your seats. Dear God, we thank you for the generosity of the people that are here today to give money to the Mobile United Methodist Ministry. We ask your blessing on the work that they do. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up today. The scripture reading uh, is from Genesis 21, verses 1 through 7. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham, a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. 
And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And he said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Mysterious God, open us to the mystery of your love. Open us as you were opened for us in love. Reach out your hand to us in love, so we may offer this same extended love to all. In Christ's name we pray, amen. In the last seven days, I drove 330 miles to spend time with family, friends, and new church members, and more. Let me tell you about some of the places I've been in the last seven days, and I'm going to do that because I realized that I did something at each of these places. Yesterday, I was in Norwalk at a graduation party for my youngest cousin who graduated high school this year. On Friday night, Eric and I went with my dad to the Marshalltown Speedway. What else would you want to do on a Friday night, y'all? On Thursday, Eric and I went to our friend's home in Johnston for dinner and conversation. On Wednesday, I spent the evening here at church with a small group of folks who are dedicated to dreaming about what the future of this church will look like. On Tuesday, I had the pleasure of sharing dinner with seven new members of this church. It was delicious, to say the least. On Monday, I slept and recovered in anticipation for this long week. And last Sunday, I spent several hours in Des Moines at the Iowa Annual Conference with United Methodists from all over the state. Like I said earlier, I realized I did the same thing in all of these places, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm gonna say I talked, which I did, but that is not what I wanted to say. What I did at all of these places was that I spent time laughing. Laughing. It's not a surprise to most all of you that I love to laugh because it's only been a month or so when I accidentally snorted while laughing into the microphone in the midst of a sermon. And I still have nightmares about that. But when we laugh, when we laugh together or laugh alone, we live. Have you ever thought about the complexity and the gift of laughter? Laughter has no language. Or rather, laughter is the same in every language. Laughter can reveal our joy and happiness. Yesterday, I laughed while I watched my niece Mava shake a little to the music that played at this graduation party we were at. I laughed at dinner on Tuesday night while listening to our new friends, Tammy and Brad, who normally sit over here, they were sharing about their adventures of camping. And I laughed when most of us squirmed because they claimed that camping was fun. (laughs) Fun. I even laughed at my own home this week while watching the birds and the squirrels fight over the food that we have in our little bird feeder sitting outside our kitchen window. Some of you are nodding, so you've had this similar experience. In these moments, in all these moments, my laughter was connected to my joy. My involuntary moments of laughter shared to the world that I was experiencing the delight of being alive. But laughter, it's complex. It isn't always connected to our joy or our delight. Sometimes our laughter reveals our discomfort or our confusion. 
Sometimes I might let out a laugh when Cole, our media guy, tells me about our church's technology problems because I have no idea what he's talking about. And so this laughter reveals my confusion, like, huh, I don't know what you mean. Sometimes our laughter can even reveal our disbelief. I think that's what Sarah's laughter reveals in today's scripture story. Sarah and Abraham have been promised a family. They've been promised a lineage. And when that lineage didn't come on their timeline, they took matters into their own hands and they ended up causing harm and suffering along the way. That's not part of the story we heard today, but that's part of the story we didn't hear today. In today's story, though, We find God appearing again to share the unimaginable, to promise Abraham and Sarah again that Sarah will in fact bear a child in or after her 90 years of life. Sarah's response isn't, hooray! And it isn't, I can't wait! But instead it's, ha, yeah, right. That's Danny's translation, ha. Yeah, right. A response, this laughter is of disbelief. It's a response understood in all languages. When have we too laughed in disbelief? When have we too assumed God wouldn't show up and keep God's promises? A little over a year ago, Eric and I made a couple of risky decisions as we prepared to move here to town. We knew we wanted to buy a home in Marshalltown as we knew we would serve, start serving here at Hope starting July 1st. We visited open houses and our offers were never accepted because they were contingent on the sale of our Des Moines home. With little time on our hands, we sold our house before we bought a house. Thanks be to God, we found a home a few blocks away from this church. But when we found that home, the owner said they would not be ready to move out until three weeks after we had to move out of our Des Moines home. I am sure that I laughed in disbelief when I heard this. I probably cried, but for the purposes of this story, I laughed. Ha, three weeks. My sweet parents took me in, and long story short, three weeks turned into five, and I worried. I started to worry, could we survive five weeks living with my parents? I can ask that because they're not here this morning. (laughs) But in all honesty, would my parents survive five weeks of all four of us humans plus our dog who we bought for only $10, and we got what we paid for, Would my parents, my neighbors know what I'm talking about, yeah. Would my parents survive this in their three-bedroom home? Let's just say my parents and I get along real well when we don't live together. (laughs) And yet, and yet, let's remember what (coughs) we heard. Hold on. And yet, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? That's what we hear here in verse 14. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? I can ask this question now because we're a year away. Thanks be to God. We have been at Hope for almost an entire year. And I've seen this church blossom and bloom again. I mean, look around. Look look around, seriously. Look who is sitting next to you. Look at how we have bloomed and blossomed again after a gruesome pandemic. If someone would have told me a year ago that in a year's time, we would welcome 13 new members, celebrate three baptisms, and help relocate four families from Ukraine, and have fun in the midst of all of this, if somebody would have told me we were going to do that in a year, I probably would have laughed. I'd be wondering, where do you think we have the time for all of this? And yet, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? 
Imagine Jesus' disciples when he would tell them about his upcoming crucifixion and his resurrection. Maybe Peter and Andrew shook their heads in disbelief. Perhaps John rolled his eyes. Maybe Thomas would have laughed at the idea. Ha! Why would Jesus think it's okay to say something that absurd? But of course, we know what happens between that Good Friday and Easter Sunday when God defies death, when Christ becomes a new creation, and yet is anything too wonderful for the Lord? In recent years, as our denomination has been splitting over the topic of human sexuality, I have worried that God would get lost in our debates and in our disagreements. Most years, I spend my time at annual conference rolling my eyes rather than laughing. But this year was different. That's where I was last weekend. Our new bishop, Bishop Kenitha, she led the conference last weekend with this new energy and uplifting spirit that I know the whole body felt. On that first full day of conference at the Recplex in West Des Moines, Bishop Kenitha walked into the room, which is usually used as an ice hockey rink. Instead, we were all gathered there, all these really cool United Methodist people. That first day, Bishop Kenitha walked in with a custom-made hockey jersey that had her name on it. She had a helmet and a hockey stick. Is that what they call it, a hockey stick? Okay, thanks. And she shuffled in to the room as she moved in between our tables, just like you might if you were on ice. As she reached the front of the room, her two sons threw her into the penalty box, and we started business for the first time in maybe a decade at annual conference with laughter in our hearts, rather than anger or hurt. At other moments during our conference, we heard the bishop preach of love and compassion. She ended one of her sermons dancing. She washed the feet of the newly ordained, and she led us in song throughout the weekend. If someone would have told me three years ago that the United Methodist Church of Iowa would share more joy than we did anger at annual conference of 2023, you know what I probably would have done. I would have laughed. I would have laughed in disbelief. And yet, and yet, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? I try to imagine what people may have said here at Hope more than 52 years ago. Some of you here, some of those who have gone before us, you shared a dream. A dream that God's love needed spread farther and wider here in Marshalltown. I wonder if some people heard this dream of building a new church building, starting a new congregation in an area that hadn't been nearly as developed when they shared this, a new vision that couldn't be seen but could only be dreamed. I wonder if there were people who laughed at that absurdity. Do you know how much that's going to cost? What happens if we can't fundraise enough? What happens if no one new will come to church here? And yet, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Will you say that with me? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Friends, sometimes this story of Sarah's involuntary laughter, sometimes it's used to teach a lesson that isn't always helpful. In other words, some have interpreted this story to mean that we get what we want when we are faithful. We get what we want when we want when we're faithful. And if people just prayed hard enough or prayed the right prayer, then they get what they ask for, such as, for Sarah's case, conceiving a child. But I know that can't possibly be the only way of making sense of what happens here with Sarah. I know this because I recently learned that one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage, and one in eight people suffer from infertility. I know personally that this isn't a lack of one's faith. It's not a result of praying the wrong prayer. 
But that also doesn't mean that God won't be around in the waiting and the grieving. It means that God will be around in the waiting and the grieving. That's what I think Genesis 18, 14 means when we say, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? In Sarah and Abraham's case, they must ask this question, is anything too wonderful for God? When they give birth to Isaac, whom they gave a name meaning laughter, as we discover in the 21st chapter of Genesis, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? And everything we do and every decision we make, we never do it alone. That's what this story reminds us. We may not get what we ask for when we ask for it, but Sarah's holy laughter in the midst of her unraveling turns into unanticipated joy, unexpected surprise. It's in this joy that she remembers that question, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? I think not. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to take a look at your bulletin insert so that you know how you can pray. Thank you. Pray for the people of this community, for your neighbors. One prayer that's not listed on there I received last night. Please pray for David Wright. David, you may remember I talked in a Blue Stone moment not too long ago about Becky and Glenn's grandson. Uh, who just happened to be my service advisor at a car dealership recently. Anyway, Grant's father-in-law is David Wright, and he fell and, um, had a, and they think had a stroke. And so Becky and Glenn ask for prayers for David, um, hopefully that he'll recover, that he's free from pain in this time. What other prayer requests would you like to lift up? Janine has the microphone ready. We have a joy. Otto won two gold medals at the Iowa Senior Games yesterday. Wonderful. Way to go, Otto. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for Marsha Pollock, I pronounced it right the one that has helped me since I got out of the hospital. And she has had severe back pain and she doesn't know what's wrong. And she's going to a doctor, but she is on a heating pad. And yesterday, um, when it's Michael's lady friend, and when they get together, I am told to stay out of the business. So I was sitting outside at the patio table, and I thought I heard her crying, but I did not interfere, and pretty, I was going to go in and see what was wrong, and my brother came out, and she did too, and he said she's got severe back pain, and they were trying to lift a mattress onto a Davenport, and that's what happened, and she's been in misery ever since. 
So I'm hoping that she gets better. Denise, can you tell us her name again? It's Marsha. Marsha. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. For Marsha, thank you very much. I'd like prayers for the family of Paul Heckman, who passed away a few days ago, lived to be 91, and did many, many fabulous things. Mm. Thank you, Carol, for the family and friends of Paul. Thank you. A prayer is for our great-grandson, Drew, who is entering YSS in Ames a Tuesday for drug and alcohol addiction. For Drew, thank you, thank you. Uh, prayers for my friend Sue, who is undergoing some health issues and has tests and she's having to have blood transfusions, so she really needs our prayers. Thank you, Peggy, for Sue. Thank you. A joy that we will be celebrating our 41st anniversary tomorrow with my husband. Amen. Amen. Prayers of joy for Keith and Kathy. Thank you. Um, prayers for a friend. Him and his, well, his family has been through quite a bit. His son fractured his femur in mm -hmm. Arizona, and so he traveled down there to be with his son for his surgery. And while he was down there, he had a diverticuli rupture. The nurse came in and said, you're bleeding. What's wrong? Um, so they wanted to keep him overnight, and he said, no, I'll be staying in the chair right next to my son. So, and then um, his wife is actually up in northern Iowa taking care of her father as he is battling esophageal cancer and mm -hmm. feeding tube. So just prayers for their family. They're going through a lot right now. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Any others? I know there's a lot of sadness in the world, but you, your sermon was about laughing today. I had a laughing moment while I was sitting here. I brought a container with my noisy money, and I reached in my purse, and I brought out dog food. <laughs> You brought, oh dear. No. <laughs> I hey. had two containers, and I didn't even look when I brought this out. And before I put it in the coin thing, I did look. Oh, my Finley's dog food. <laughs> Only Alice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your poor dog. <laughs> all right, let's lift up all these prayers of joy and of sorrow. Let's lift them up all to God. God of us all, help us to live in the uncomfortable reality of your mystery. Without full answers or consistent assurance, we continue to be surprised by you. Create in us new minds and hearts that allow for uncertainty and surprise. Guide us as people of a mysterious faith. May we be challengers and not assumers. May we be dismantlers rather than builders of boundaries and walls that keep people from experiencing you. Help us, Lord, to find you in the face of our neighbor as we trust in your mysterious presence with every one of us. Lord, lastly, help us be a church, a nation, a world that embraces the hopes and fears of those in our communities who have yet to be fully heard or misunderstood. We desire a world where your promises find life and life abundant among us all. With our hopes and dreams of a just world in mind, we pray all this in the name of the risen Christ who loves each and every one of us. Amen. 
I want to invite George to come forward and share our mission moment. And we'll get our Vannas up here to help me out in this process as well. Uh, thanks, Pastor Danny, for the opportunity to talk about the Tiger Vault. This month's CARES project is supporting MCC, Marshtown Community College, Tiger Vault. And for those of you who haven't heard me yet talk about this, the Tiger Vault helps those students who are in need, many of whom are international or out of area needing basic supplies. Imagine arriving from Sao Paulo, Brazil, over 12 million inhabitants, to a city of 25,000, with a room facing cornfields at three in the morning with no supplies. So aside from the need for basic care items, toilet paper especially, and cleaning supplies or laundry supplies, last year we gave each student in need coming into housing a welcome pack. The welcome pack consists of a pillow, a blanket, sheets, towels, all bound together in a bag that has a nice little message saying, welcome to MCC, we're glad you're here, courtesy of Hope United Methodist Church and others. Last year, with your help and our church support, plus the support of three other churches, we gave out over 60 welcome packs. This year, according to Vicki Unferth, the international coordinator, the demand will be higher as many countries have begun to lighten their granting of student visas. So again, many thanks for all of your help over these many years of welcoming students to MCC and Marshalltown and the opportunity for their being able to gain an education and progress in their lives as well. Uh, oh yes, by the way, money is always graciously accepted. <laughs> P.S. Do watch for the news of a new food pantry coming to MCC to help especially those in need locally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Dane. There are always many ways we can give back to God. This is one way. Let's spend some time now worshiping God and giving thanks to God as we offer our gifts.
We offer ourselves with our various gifts, confident that you, O Lord, have a purpose for them and for us. We rededicate our lives at this altar. May our offerings reach beyond the barriers of our former thinking and doing. In the spirit of Christ, we pray and we live. Amen. If you would, please stay standing. Let's, let's sing our closing hymn, verses 1 and 4 of It Is Well With My Soul. Thank you for staying several extra minutes so that we could share in the love of Christ at his heavenly feast, so that we could celebrate Maeve, so that we could share all the good and holy work this church is up to. As you go, may you go with this blessing. May the wonderful love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day, reminding you that you'll never be alone. You will always be accompanied by God who loves you and cares for you. Friends, nothing is too wonderful for our God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go in peace.